hello hello again good morning how's everybody doing i hope you are doing great in the name of the lord this is the day that he has made let us rejoice let us rejoice and be glad in it we just praise god today because we are alive right we are alive so we are not going to take that for granted hallelujah i'm glad that you're here you know if you happen to come in my page hit that button right i'm telling you it's not you it's the lord that leads you that means he has a word for you so welcome to the daily rema word of god okay hallelujah we just praise him my name is pastor and marie so we are going to talk for a minute okay and see what the lord has in store for you guys so before we started let's say a word of prayer hallelujah father god we just thank you and we bless your name we give you glory and honor today lord god for today is the day that you made lord god we rejoice in it we are glad in it father god we approach your throne Father God, with thanksgiving and, 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 and praise in our in our lips, Father God, and, and, and with gratitude in our heart, Father God. We just want to say thank you for today. Thank you for breathing life into us, for we know not many made it today. Even as we are speaking right now, Father God, horrible things are happening. It's not because we're any better than they are, but Father God, we acknowledge, Father God, it is your grace. It's just your grace, and we just thank you for it. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in this session. I ask that you speak to your people. I ask, Holy God, that you will touch their heart, open their heart, so that they may receive what you are saying to them, Lord. Let their heart be a good ground, Father God. Let everything you're going to speak today fall into that good ground and so that it can bear fruit that will remain. Holy Spirit, I make myself scared and I ask that they will only see you through me in the name of Jesus. Oh, I surrender my mouth to you and I ask that you use it to speak to your people. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for your truth that will set your people free. Let those that have ears to hear, let them hear what your spirit is saying. Hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. I'm glad you're here. I thank God for you. And uh, so we're going to jump right in and see what he has in store for you guys. So today, it's going to be a little bit different again. We're going to um, just talk a minute, okay? My goal, my goal is to make this as quick as possible. just want to talk a minute, okay? But like I said, those of you who already know me, the Holy Spirit will, will just do what he does through me okay so usually when when i'm up here i end up talking things that then not even i didn't even write down i didn't even look up or whatever you know the holy spirit just speaks so you know the thing is that's the way the spirit of god is you know it depends who's watching and he he knows who's gonna have watched the video and then he will just speak to them so that's how i let the holy spirit use me he is limitless in my in my life and i let him flow however he please hallelujah so having said that let's just get started you know i would like to talk to you guys today about training up your children yes um it's a sensitive uh topic people don't like especially when it comes to talking about their kids you know they're doing the best they can and they don't want they they always seeing it as criticism and this and that this and that i tell you what you know what when we love our kids too much we don't get to do what we're supposed to do 
okay because don't forget god give you this uh, children is not for your pleasure he give them to you one as a gift and two to raise them up in the way they should go for him so that later on they get to know jesus they get to serve them they get to keep the gospel going okay so this is why we have children okay this is why god gave us children to raise them for him so that they can keep the kingdom of god moving all right so now hallelujah so uh train up that's why i titled this this session train up your children okay so let's let's look at proverb 22 verse 6 it says start children off on the way they should go and even when they are old they will not turn from it if you raise your children in the way they should go meaning you raise them in the lord you know start with them from wound why not because you know i'm learning you know you you know at five at five months i believe uh uh the, the the child can hear that little baby inside of you can hear so you got people who start they put a microphone or whatever they put uh um they play music for them they speaking to them you know and things like that so why not start raising them up why not start and planting the word of god sowing the word of god in them while they're in the womb you know raise them in the way of the lord you know stop showing off your children you know the the you know the baby's not even born yet you see them you know your ah oh, it's so much going on once again i'm not sitting here trying to judge i'm not judging okay but i'm trying to help you because i'm looking around i'm seeing around and the way those kids are today it's unbelievable it's unbearable i mean they have no fear for god because you know what they always say it's start at home however you see your kids behave in the outside it's because it's allowed it's tolerate in the house okay so therefore yes sometimes we can do the best that we can and when they get out there in their own you know what they they, they just go at it but that's why it says when they get older, they will not depart from it. Even if they were to turn around and guess what? Somehow, because you have already set up a foundation and guess what? They will turn right back around because there is a foundation that was there. So that's why it means to raise your children in the way of the Lord and part to them, you know, uh, 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 teach them to fear God. Okay, nowadays they, they don't fear God. You don't hear people teaching that today, you know. I'm like, what I'm noticing the Lord draw my attention to not too long ago, and I was talking um, to my um, sisters about it. I even talked to my kids about it. Is that nowadays preachers, the church, most of them, okay, you will see that um, they're trying to, they're so desperate trying to reach young people, trying to help young people to go on for the Lord. They are compromising the word of God. They're twisting the word of God. You know, the, the words about it, they're taking God and they bring it down to, that, to, to the young generation's level. Instead of them teaching them to, to rise up to the God's uh, uh, level, to go, to, to go seek God, but yet they're bringing God down to them. What I'm trying to say, they're trying to teach the word of God in a way where it will not offend them. Uh, they're trying to teach them uh, 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 playing uh, 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 secular music. I, I just talked about that not too long ago. You know, playing those kind of music in the church to keep the kids going. They, 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 man, you don't even see uh, 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 leaders dressing up 
anymore. When I say dressing up, I know back then people used to dress up to the teeth, they wear their, their suit, their tie and all. I'm not saying about that you got to be like that, but you know what? You cannot go all the way down in order to try to reach young people because that's not what God is all about. He said, raise up the child in the way it should go. You know, the book of Deuteronomy talk about that a lot. Okay, let me give you some reference. Deuteronomy 4, okay, 410. Deuteronomy 6, you know, 1, 2, and then uh, verses 1 and 2, 6 and 9. It took, uh, uh, Job talks about that. Psalm 111 talk about that. Proverb 1, 7. I mean, it's all talking about raise up your children. Teach them to fear the Lord. Teach them the word of God. That's what it talks about. It doesn't say compromise the word of God to suit your children. It doesn't say, you know, you yourself as a leader, you are compromising yourself. You are doing things in a way in order to see if you can gain the those young people to come to church and all, and then you bring in God. We don't realize we're doing that. We're bringing God down to the level. No. Nah. We're supposed to teach them to fear God, okay? There is, I, I, I mean, I don't, I, I, I really, I mean, those things, they upsetting, okay? Yeah, yeah, we old-fashioned. You know, I, I tell my children all the time, yes, I'm old-fashioned, but what I'm saying to you, what I'm teaching you right now, it's going to help you later because this is what young, young people need today. They need old-fashioned to teach them the right way of the Lord, okay? Not trying to be like them, dressing, you know, because they, 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 they dress however they want to go to church. You know, young men have no respect for themselves. they wearing their pins down and their knees. I mean, young women, I mean, they're wearing, I oh God, it's just awful because they, we are not doing what we're supposed to do. Yes, we're raising them, but we lock in something. What are we lacking? We lock in the presence of the Lord. We lock in, we ourselves lock in the fear of the Lord because we need to raise them for God. We need to raise little warriors today. Okay. Not, 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 not kids, you know, later on, you know, when they face with giants, they're running away from it. You know, kids today are dying so young so young, just not too long ago, this 13 year old died. I mean, did that 13 year old get up, get up that morning and say, Ooh, I'm going to die today. No, that was the last thing on that kid's mind. Okay. And, and, you know, we leaders, we're not doing that. We, we, we bringing God down to them when we are supposed to teach them to seek God elevated, you know, go to God because the higher, the, the, the more you seek God, the, the, the more you get to know about God, the higher he's lifting you up. But nowadays we want to reach them in a way, well, we're trying to bring young people in the church. We're trying to keep them interested in, in, in the word of God. And then we, we entertain them. We entertain them in church. We take the word of God. We entertain them with it. Okay. We, we, we take the, when we're supposed to worship, we entertain, we turn it into an entertainment. And then next thing you know, you know, those, those kids, they're not learning. They don't know God. They don't, they don't see God as he should be seen. You know, they, they, they're not experiencing the power of God. They're not seeing nothing. You see what I'm saying? When those young kids out there in the workplace and the school, okay, in the in the in the campus, and then they're facing with opposition. They don't know how to handle it because they were never taught how. They were only entertained, and then we leaders are doing a really bad job about it. 
okay? We're not teaching them to fear the Lord. We're not teaching them. We're not raising them to be warriors, you know, giant slayers. We're not raising them that way, but we're raising them in a way where we're so concerned about, ooh, I want them to come in the church, to stay in the church. So because we want them to come in the church, to stay in the church, and then we make a church service and entertainment, okay? They have enough entertainment. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I pray the Lord, you, you mothers, you fathers are not being offended at what I'm saying. I'm trying to help, okay? I'm trying to help because I'm seeing those children of God, those little kids, they are going to hell and hands, you know, and, 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 I mean, they buy truckloads. They are going, they are dying, they, they're disrespectful, they, they don't respect you parents, they don't, they have, if they don't respect you, of course they're not going to have respect for God, you know, they have no respect for authority, they, they got to speak their mind and oh my God, yes, we have to encourage them to speak their mind, but how are you speaking your mind? You understand what I'm saying, okay? Um, like I said, you know, the Lord put this in my heart. I'm like, well, here you go. I mean, those are sensitive subjects. Those are things that people don't want to hear. Those are things that your children don't want to hear, but somebody got to say it. Somebody needs to be bold enough to say it, okay? Because I'm telling you, the word of God is the truth. And if we don't do it, if we we leaders don't start doing what we're supposed to do, I'm telling you, we're going to start seeing a lot worse than what's going on today. Okay, let me let me let me uh, give a couple few uh, a few more scriptures. Okay, that's kind of supporting what I'm saying. I'm not just sitting there talking to you. You know, the Lord wants you to start gaining control of your children, to start raising them the way they should go. Psalm 127 verse 3, it says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are reward from them, from him. So when God gives you a child, that's a gift. It's a gift. But that gift he gives you, you are not to worship that gift. You are not to do whatever you want with that gift. But that gift he gives you is for you to return right back to him. You know who, who did that? Uh, Samuel's mother, H Hannah. Hannah gave as God for a child because she couldn't she she couldn't have two uh, uh kids and and um uh, the other mistress was making fun of her and this and that and God and she interceded and asked God for a child and she told God if you give me a child I am going to give that child right back to you okay and then she did she kept her word God blessed her with Samuel and then she gave him right back to the Lord for the service of the Lord and after that we read God blessed her with many other children okay so when god gave us kids we're supposed to give them back to the lord okay that mean where it start it start at home start raising them not when they start getting teenager because they're not gonna listen you start imparting into them when they are young young when they babies i mean from the stomach like i say start playing worship music you know and read the bible to them while they end the womb you know start raising them up in the way of the lord Proverbs 9 and 10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Okay? When you start teaching your kids to fear the Lord, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. You are teaching them to fear the Lord. To fear the Lord. Okay? Teach them to hate sin. And then because if you have the fear of God in you, I'm telling you, you hate sin because God does not deal with sin. With sin, He's holy; He don't deal with sin. Okay, so therefore, when you have the fear of the Lord in you, I'm telling you, you hate sin. You wanna stay away from sin. Okay, so um, 
I have another one. It says, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17. It says, all scriptures is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking errors, correcting faults, okay? And giving instructions for right living so that the person who serve God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deeds. So I just read that in the Good News Translation. Okay, I mean, this is so clear. The, the scriptures, it's inspired by God and it is used, it, 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 we, we use it, okay, to teach the truth, okay, the truth of God. And you know, when you know the truth, the word say, you will be set free to rebuke errors, okay, to correct fault. That's why we, uh, the word of God does Okay, and then so that you can be fully equipped. So when you're doing that with your children, teaching them the truth of the Lord, the word of God, so that they know the truth to, to, set, to be set free. Okay, so that later on when they hear something contrary to what you taught them, to what the word of God said, that they can stand up to it and not accepting it so that it doesn't, you know, corrupting their lives. Okay, don't be afraid to, to, to correct your children. Don't be afraid to teach them. S stop sugarcoating the word of God in order to please them. Okay, stop doing that. Don't do that, and the Lord is not appreciating it. He, he, the Lord just don't like that, and I'm telling you, we are seeing the result of that. Those of us who wants to entertain our children, we seeing the reason, the the result of it from a young age. Here's another thing that one of the um the Lord brought into my attention. I was um teaching my children. Right now in my in my house, I'm teaching them the 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 this, the, the mass uh, uh, um, weapon that the enemy used to destroy us. Okay, I'm teaching them about different things, and one of the thing that um, we talk about was addiction. There is, I mean, addiction is in uh, uh, different different levels, okay? Uh, we, we, we have people who are addicted to substances, and then we have people who are addicted to, to, to things, okay? One of the things that the enemy is now using to destroy your children is social media. It's social media. It's those electronic things. It's phones, for God's sake. These phones are taking those children, those, those young people straight to hell because the phone become God to them. Social media, that's where they live, they breathe, they have their being. When, when they're supposed to live and have their being in God, but yet social media is, that's where they live. That's where they, I mean, that's where they get fed and they only get fed garbage nothing else garbage to 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 what's that gonna help them tomorrow when the when the enemies are attacking them when they're facing with peer pressure how feeding on the internet and facebook going to help them later in life no it doesn't only the word of god will help them later only fearing the lord will help them later nothing else okay this is one of the massive weapon that the enemy satan and all his demons are using against your children and then you know what we starting those children as young as baby because now we you seeing babies with, with with phones and they got games going on they so lost in the game on the phone whose phone it is your phone parents you got them expensive phone and smartphones and this and that who got it you did so who's destroying it who's Helping the Satan to destroy your children, you come, you you are contributing to it. 
Okay? I'm not saying your kids cannot, cannot be on Facebook. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying they cannot have a phone. Don't misquote me. Don't let the spirit of Leviathan twist in the word I'm saying right now. All I'm saying, we need self-control, okay? Because I'm telling you, this is what the enemy is using. He is strong, and then he's using it, and it's only getting worse. And then those young kids, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I mean, you, you you know, you got teenagers, you got you got kids at home, you know how they are, okay? You see how they are, and they are addicted to 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 phones, to their phones. They are addicted in Facebook. They are addicted with social media. Period. To, all day long, they keep texting. They, I mean, and then they're talking about nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. They're exposing their lives, watching the wrong thing, listening to the enemy. You know, social media, media saying, you know, it, it's, it's, um, the Greek word for it, it's, it's medium, medium. You know what a medium is, right? Those are the people, the foretelling people. That contacted demons and they and in the stars and all they call themselves psychic, but yet what's ministering to them, what giving them, what's giving them information is familiar spirits. I mean, this is I mean, this is deep. This is deep, and this is one of the way that the enemy is destroying your children through social media. Okay, through those devices, these devices. You see what I'm saying? They don't know when to use it. They don't know when to put it down. Now their parents can't even talk to their children. I mean, they sit on the table. Who? What table? I mean, how many of us sit down and have a meal as a family nowadays? Because everybody's busy. Busy doing what? They're busy on their phone on social media. You know, or they, they, they will gather at the table and then you see them on their phone. They're texting each other on the phone. And they're sitting right there on the table. I remember not too long ago, um, I went out in a restaurant. I was sitting there. I was sitting there. And then I happened to glimpse over to the next table. You got this. I don't know if they were husband and wife or father and daughter. I don't know. But you got two people sitting there. Then both of them, they order the food and then they're on the phone. No conversation whatsoever. Whatsoever. The food comes. They see the phone is right there next to them. They're eating. They, they're doing whatever they do on the phone. They cannot. People go to sleep with their phone. They wake up with their phone. And, oh, it is a massive weapon that the enemy is using to destroy you, to destroy your children. And the worst thing is we parents, we helping the enemy to destroy them because at a very young age, we give our children, you give your children phones, do you, they, they, they addicted, they get addicted to it. You don't know how to... Uh, 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 quiet them down except by giving them the phone to play game. And you wonder why you don't have control of your child. You know, and I've seen, I've seen on social media, people are, you know, advertising their children all the time. And they're, you know, those kids are so young. Don't put them on, on social media. I mean, I'm telling you, yes, they're cute. All right. But you know what you're doing? You destroying them. You are exposing them. You are exposing them to social media. There's all kind of demons that flows there. I'm telling you, your soul is a gatekeeper. Your ear is a gate. Is a gate. I'm telling you, you have to be vigilant. You got to watch that because you know how we are affected by what we're watching. Why the, the word uh, said, you know, be careful of the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh. Okay? Pride of life. We need to be careful because those are, are gates. And then the, the demons will come through. They will come through by watching the wrong thing, by listening to the wrong thing on, on social media. We are addicted and they make sure you, they keep your children addicted 
and so that they can destroy them later. I'm, I'm driving, I'm seeing people, young people, or however old they are, they're crossing the street, for God's sake, the light is green, cars is flying, they're crossing the street, they are on the phone, texting and whatever they do with it they could not put it down do you know how many accidents are going on today because of the phone spirit of death is rav it's just sabotaging and ravaging i mean lives it i mean spirit of death is just oh my god drink blood every day take lives every day every second because of that device the enemy is using against you when this device is supposed to help us to stay in communication but yet it becomes god it be it replaced god and your children's life it replaced him okay so all i'm saying as the holy spirit to have self-control all i'm saying as the Holy Spirit to help you to raise your children for him in the way they should go. Okay, I have, you know, um, the last thing I have here, you know, I said I wasn't going to keep it so long, okay, too long. Um, I have here, I wrote, we want to, to raise our children to be warriors, giant slayers. That's what we want. We want to impart the word of God in them. We want to teach them the fear of the Lord, to have respect for God, for to reverence God. You know, uh, uh, be, be aware of how they go to church, how they act in church. I'm seeing children in church. They're sitting there they, 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 next to their parents and they they, they, they <laughs> giggling and the phone texting and talking. With not talking about not only young children we're talking about big 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 children big i mean they're giggling on the phone the preacher's talking and who cares they they they're doing worship they're on the phone chit-chatting and 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 facebook what is that that's that's not teaching them the fear of the lord they go in the house of the of the lord they have no respect for god they have no respect for you parents and then they lost they are lost and then we are not doing what we're supposed to do. The church not doing that, what they're supposed to do. Some of them. Okay, now they, they, they're so focused on trying to get the, the young to the church. And then yet they're compromising God's word. They're twisting it. They, they entertain with it. When we just read God's words is to teach the truth, is to rebuking, is to, is to correcting. Okay, you know, now they, they're not... They're not they're not doing that. They're not correcting those kids. They're not rebuking them. They're not uh -uh, teaching them the truth, but yet they're entertaining them. They're trying to keep them in the church and then bring, you know, take God's presence because God is not going to be entertained by this. You're not going to make a mockery out of him. So therefore, our young children today, they're not warriors. They're not warriors. They're not giant slayers because when they, do you see the, the suicide rates is so high? Why? Because they face problem. They don't know what to do about it. They are weak and then they kill themselves. Satan come right there and say, hey, you're not worth living. And then they kill themselves. So we don't want that. We want to raise warriors. We want to raise kids to, to be like Joshua, like David, giant slayer. Now, you know, and if when you're reading the story of Goliath and David, guess what? It says David, when David go to face him, you know what David did? He runs towards him. Okay, he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. He runs towards the giant he didn't run away from the giant today we we're not teaching our kids to run towards their giant they're running away from it not only that they kill themselves because they don't know how to handle this we didn't equip them for that or we did equip them with its social media it's a device telephone that's why we equip them with. And then when, when they are in real trouble out there, guess what? They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Okay? So we don't want that. We want to raise them to be like an Elisha. Elijah, 
Jose is Josea. You know that that Josea. He be, I mean, read that in Second Chronicle, I believe, thirty four. He became king at eight years old. Eight years old, and he walked right in the sight of the Lord. He was the king that tear down strongholds. He tear down high places. Okay, because his mom raised him in the way. He should have gone. His dad raised him in the way to, to actually, no, I wouldn't say that. His dad was wicked in the sight of the Lord, but yet the mom was doing the right thing. You understand what I'm saying? So somebody taught him about, about the Lord. Yes, I understand you fathers out there. You are not being the spiritual leader God called you to be. You need to be the spiritual leader he calls you to be. You need, you, you supposed to teach your kids about God. Okay. We, you supposed to do, to do that. You, you upset in their lives. You, you, you don't care for them. You don't impart into them. You don't, you don't talk to them. How are you doing that? How are they supposed to become a man? How are they supposed to become a young woman? Okay. When nothing was imparted into them. Okay, you don't bless them. You don't do any of those things. You know, throughout the Bible, you think, uh, uh, um, especially in the Old Testament, before a father died, he blessed his children. And then when he's blessing them, whatever he speak into their lives, whatever he speak, I'm telling you, it's what will happen. Okay, so we don't do that today. All we do, we curse them. All we do, we, we give them device to destroy their lives. Okay, so you need to start, I mean, you need to start, get it together, you mom, you dad, get it together, okay? Let's get it together. So we need to raise warriors, we need to raise intercessors, we need to raise, you know, uh, kids to become like Apostle Paul, speak with boldness, you know? Nowadays, those kids who are Christian, okay, they don't even witness to their friends about Jesus. They're so ashamed of Jesus. They don't want to talk about Jesus because they, they don't want to feel different. They don't want people to make fun of them. It starts at home. Okay? It starts at home. And let me tell you this. If you have been doing that, if you have them been doing that, glory to the Lord, help him to help you to keep doing it. Guess what? You're not going to be a popular person. Let, let me tell you something. I'm not, a, I'm not a popular person in my house because I got to do what I God called me to do, which is to raise them up in the way of the Lord. So I'm going to tell you the truth. And then not only did I tell them the truth, I back it up with scripture because you know what? Later on, I don't want to go to the Lord when I when I stand in his presence and he's going to ask me, what have I, you done with those kids I gave you? And then I can't answer. No, he's going to see that I've done what I'm supposed to do. And then even then they walk away from what I told them. Guess what? Somehow because the seed is there, they're going to, God going to make sure he turn them right back around. But if you don't plant anything, you don't sow no seed in them. And then the only seed you planting is buying them expensive phone and, and introduce them at an early age social media. That's all they're going to have. And that means they are setting footstool. They are Satan chewing gum because Satan will chew them off, okay? So you don't want that, okay? Having said that, I mean, I could go on and on about this subject because this is really, I get ticked off sometimes, you know? Uh, you know, if you were to talk to, to those youngsters I have in my house, look, I have I have 24 years olds I have 16 years olds I have, I have 21 years olds and I have eight year olds in my house. I'm, I'm, let me tell you this. They know I don't play. And they, if you were to talk to them, they'll tell you. I will tell them what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. When they ask me for something, they try to tell me something. Whenever the Lord leads me to tell them what they need to hear, that's what I'm going to tell them. I try to lead them in the right way. I, I, I'm trying to raise them to be warriors, to learn how to handle a situation when it comes 
in front of them when problem comes not giving up not running away i'm teaching them to seek god first in his righteousness and everything else they need god will give it to them this is what you need to teach your children not facebook not giving them expensive phones not doing any of that not imparting the right thing into the life let me tell you this God is faithful. God is awesome. God is a God of a second chance, okay? If you have not been doing that, all you need to do is repent. Repent and ask the Lord to help you start, okay? Yes, you know what? It's going to be a little hard because now that they're already addicted to the phones, to their iPods, whatever else they're using today, to their games and stuff like that, it's going to be a little hard getting it away from them. But you know what? Just like any addiction, when you're trying to get away from it, you're going to go through a withdrawal. That means you're going to throw fits and it's not. It's going to be ugly. But you know what? The spirit, if you're willing, Father, if you're willing, Mother, the spirit of God will help you through it. So first of all, parents, you need to repent. Repent, get it right with the Lord. Okay, get it right. Repent because you have not been doing what you're supposed to do. You have not imparted. You have not been imparted into your children, your grandchildren. You, uh, you know, you have not been doing that. So repent of that. Repent and ask the Lord to forgive you because you have not been raising your children in the way they should go for the Lord. Okay, and then now and ask Him for wisdom, discernment, and knowledge, understanding. You know, ask Him to help you out to start over again because guess what it's not too late it's not too late it's not too late if you have young children it's not too late okay god will show you what to do even if they're oh yeah like i said i have 24 you all right i have 24 you all you might say oh well my daughter or my son is 20 or 24 now you know they in their own and da, 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 and stuff like that guess what I'm telling you, God gonna help you, okay? God gonna help you with that because they might come to you with a question. They might come to you asking you for advice. Now, are you gonna tell them what they wanna hear or are you gonna tell them what the word of God said? You see what I'm saying? So that means you're not gonna be popular because we were not called to be popular with our children, okay? When you are popular, when you acting like their friends, they got enough friends to, to lead them astray. You don't need to be one of their friends that will lead them astray. You know, you can be your, your child's friend, but at the same time, they need to have the fear of the Lord and them to fear you. Okay, there is a limit, there is a boundary when it comes to become your child's friend because you don't want to be their friend in such a way where when you're trying to help them, when you're trying to talk to them, they're not listening. You see what I'm saying? They don't want to listen to you. I mean, what you're saying, they just whatever, you know, things like that. However, they do it today. I think my sister was telling me, oh, talk to their hand is an old thing now, but you know, I'm old fashioned so. Therefore, I raise them old-fashioned. I impart into them old-fashioned. I'm trying to help them to, to become a, a woman of God, man of God. You see what I'm saying? This is what we need to do. So repent and ask the Lord for help, and he is going to help you. Okay? So having said that, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And, and, um, and then uh, before I pray, let me tell you this. Let me give... Um, those of you who step up here for the first time uh, and you're listening to me, you might be offended and in, in stuff like that. Okay, you know what? If you happen to step on this channel and you listen to me thus far, guess what? God is talking to you. He's talking to you. That means when God intervened like this, I'm telling you that means things about to happen. Okay. Things are about to happen. God is a God of second chance. He, he's merciful. He's, he's loving. Okay. He's long suffering. That means he's only going to tolerate things for a minute. I'm telling you after that, you need to, he, he will take action, but God is not just going to take action. And then, and then that's it. 
without warning and everything no 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 he gives you warning he's gonna tell you he's gonna send people your way he's having me talking to you right now okay so now all you need to do is open your heart and received okay so i want you to know that yes you have been doing whatever you you can to raise your children now they're out of control i mean they dis they, they're very disrespectful they have no respect for authority. Look, if they don't have respect for you at home, they're not going to have respect for authority. And I don't even have to mention God, okay? So that's the one they should fear first, but they don't, okay? So if you don't feel God, you do anything, you whatever. You do, you go anywhere, you do anything, okay? So I want to tell you this. God is a second chance and he wants to help you. Okay, if you've been crying out, you don't know what to do. But first of all, you got to get it right with you. Okay, you need to surrender your life to the Lord, Jesus Christ. We all sinners and we fall short in the glory of God every day, every day. Okay, so we're not perfect. God knows that already. That's why he made provision over 2000 years ago. He sent his son to die for your sin. Okay, he took all the punishment for you, okay, and he went on the cross for you only because he wants to reconcile you with God, okay? So now, if you believe in the sacrifice he made, he said, you'll be born again. That means you'll be saved. That means one day you'll be with him one day, okay? But you got to confess you got to ask him to come into your 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 life, okay? Okay, I'm going to pray with you, okay? And you need to repeat. It's a simple prayer. You need to repeat uh, 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 after me, okay? And um, the reason why I ask you to repeat is because in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God sent his son to, to die for your sin, and then he raised him up. And the, and the third day, he said, you will be saved. Because it is with your mouth you confess, and with your heart you believed. Okay? So, therefore, it, repeat this prayer as Jesus for help. Because it's too much to bear. I'm telling you, we cannot raise kids in our own. We can't do it. So, we need God's help. So, that means if you don't know him yet... You need to make it right with him, and then now he's going to come in, he's going to help you, and he's going to show you what to do, okay? So having said that, repeat this prayer, say, Jesus, I thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for coming to die for me on the cross for my sin. Thank you for taking all my punishment. Jesus, I repent of everything I've ever done. I repent for walking away from you. I repent of all. Please wash me, cleanse me. I want to be a new person. I don't want to keep doing the things that keep me away from you. Jesus, I'm inviting you to come into my heart. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. Please help me. Change me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. If you just pray that, guess what? You are born again. You are now a child of God. And I promise you, this is the best decision you've ever made. I'm telling you, if, if, that decision I made to follow Christ, to accept him as my Lord and my Savior was a wrong decision. Guess what? This is the best wrong decision I've ever made. I'm telling you, because ever since I did that, my life changed. Look at me sitting right here talking to you, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm telling you. So it's it was the best decision I've ever ever made and i'm telling you this is the best decision you made right now asking jesus to be your lord and savior just surrender everything to him surrender your children to him because this is how we give we give god back our children we say god here they are they are yours please take care of them 
lead me on what to do, how to do it, you know, and I'm telling you, the Spirit of God will show you what to do, all right? So having said that, I'm going to uh, pray with you, and then um, and then I'm going to release you with a blessing, okay? Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you. We bless your name. We give you glory. We give you honor, for you are Lord. You are God. There is no others. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you today for your word. Thank you for your truth. I know your truth is hard, Father God, but you know what? You said that the, when we know the truth, it will set us free. So, Father God, I pray that your people that's watching right now receive your truth. Receive what you are saying. Father God, I, I come against the spirit of offense in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, you will close their ears so that they, the, the enemy will not minister to them, telling them that I'm being judgmental telling them that uh uh who i who do i think i am things like that father god but father god help them to hear the truth and and so that they can be set free so that they can set their children free so that they can uh, um, claim their, their children back from the enemy trying to take them to hell in hen basket, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in them, Father God. I, I ask, Father God, that you give them boldness, Father God. I pray, Father God, you will help them to be the parents you call them to be, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father God, you want them to have fun with their children, but at the same time, you want, you want them to teach their children that they need to know who's their parents and who's their child. They need to teach their children, Father God, to fear you, Father God. And I pray you give those parents watching right now the boldness to do that, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray for the fear of the Lord to be upon those parents as well, Father God. In the name of Jesus, help their life to be an example for their children's life. In the name of Jesus, Father God, because they cannot tell them to do something and then they do in the opposite because they, they're going to call them a hypocrite. So, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you help them, Father God. Help them with those youngsters, those who are raising, those who have newborns right now, Father God. Raising them, Father God. Help them to surrender that child to you, Father God. And help them, Father God, not to let those kids to become addicted with this massive um, weapon, uh, destructive weapon that the enemy is using against their children. Father God, I pray you will give them the grace, Father God, to do what you call them to do. I pray that, Father God, you help them to raise little David, little Jeremiah, little, little uh, Moses for you, Father God, little Jeremiah, Father God, little Elijah, Elisha, Father God, little Joshua, Father God, help them to raise warriors for you, Father God, help them to raise Davids for you, Father God, men after your own heart, help them to raise them to be men and women of God not afraid to speak the word of God in the face of adversary, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for blessing them. I thank you, Father God, for those who have just received you right now and making you the Lord and Savior, Father God. I thank you for changing their life. I thank you for teaching, for showing up for them, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for revealing yourself to them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I praise you, Father God. I bless your name, giving you glory, giving you honor, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Hallelujah. And may the Lord give you his shalom peace. Nothing broken, nothing lacking. In the name of Jesus, receive the Lord's peace. I speak peace to your situation right now. I speak peace to your heart, to your soul. Peace in your home. Peace in your marriage. In the name of Jesus. And peace in your household. In the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And I thank you, Lord God. You yourself will bless your people. Hallelujah. I just praise God. I thank God. Like I said, I wasn't going to make this short, but yet it's 54 minutes. Oh, well, like I said, I do not limit it, the Holy Spirit. And let me we quickly remind you to uh, subscribe. Okay. If you subscribe and turn on um, the notification bell every time I upload a video, you will get it. Okay, so don't forget if this is helping you, share it with somebody else you know that's going through this, you know who wants to hear this. Okay, they may not want to hear it, but I'm telling you, I mean, things that's good for our soul, guess what? Always bitter. So the word of God is, it's, it's, it, it can, it can be bitter because it's a plain truth but yet you know what if we take it if we accept it if we digest it guess what it's going to make our soul well hallelujah so i'll talk to you another time i'll see you later okay in the meantime keep decreeing god's word raise your children the way they should go and then ask god for help okay hallelujah i'll talk to you later bye bye